Hello, everybody. I was not planning on doing my little tea time podcast enterprise this Lent because I didn't think that I would have time. <laughs> um, it's just been it's been a little crazy, but I was struck by inspiration this week. I had moved from, as you may, some of you, or probably all of you may know, I used to do this podcast video and audio um, every week, and it just got to a point where I couldn't keep up with both the blog and the podcast anymore, so I chose the blog and decided that I would like to try to still revive the podcast during major liturgical seasons or otherwise seasons where I would have the time and availability. So I figured we could use it for Advent and Lent and then over the summer, which I just call summer ordinary time, but I have much more availability then to do it. And I figured sometimes we could tie it in with book clubs or not or whatever we wanted to do, maybe have different themes for the different seasons. And it worked out really well for Advent. I had super long episodes because we incorporated the book club into it um, and used that for the second half of the show. And, you know, through time, I have tried different things with Tea Time. We have different segments and, and that sort of thing. And so what I decided this week, I had been thinking I wasn't going to be able to do it for Lent at all. And then I thought, I think I am putting too much pressure on myself. What I'd like to do is go back to my roots with the Tea Time podcast. This is going to be 10 minutes or under. I will aim to do it every week in Lent, but of course I can't make any promises. I'll just do the very best that I can. And so these are going to be short little vignettes about a Lenten theme or otherwise my Lenten experience so that we can have this format to share our Lent in as well. So I thought for this week um, that I would just talk about Ash Wednesday. So we're not going to have formal segments or anything. Each week it'll just be a little Lenten um a Lenten theme. So we can talk about Ash Wednesday. Maybe one week we can talk about Lenten resolutions and fasting and what almsgiving means and things like that. But most of the time I will just talk about my experience during Lent and see if, how that is relatable to you. And of course, I would love to have you write in with your own experiences. So let's start off this week. I'm pretty sure these will be on Fridays when I can do them. And the book club written posts will be on Thursdays. So there we have it. That's the plan. So this week is the first week of Lent. Uh, and of course, we start off Lent as Western Christians, um, Roman Catholics, uh, with Ash Wednesday. So I really love Ash Wednesday. I remember as a child, I did not like Ash Wednesday because we always went and received ashes in my Italian family. It was definitely part of our, our cultural tie to our faith. And I always felt very self-conscious about having the ash cross on my forehead. As I got older, um, I live in Western New York. There are a lot of Catholics here. And so on Ash Wednesday, you see tons of people walking around with the ash cross on their heads. And so I did not feel self-conscious about it anymore. When I went to graduate school in New York City, I had my very first experience of the following. I received ashes in the morning and I was walking to class and somebody stopped me and was very, um, very sweetly trying to help me out and say, you have something on your forehead, figuring that I didn't realize it was there and they didn't want me to be embarrassed later when I saw it. And I was very surprised thinking, wow, I guess there are people, adults, that throughout their life experience, they have never seen a Catholic with ashes on their forehead on Ash Wednesday. They're not familiar with that um, tradition. So it opened my eyes a little bit to the fact that there are, obviously there are a lot of different types of faiths in our world. Even amongst Christians, there may not be a lot of familiarity with this tradition. So then in my 20s, you know, I had been away from my faith for a little while and then came back and I have had an excellent experience within it ever since. Obviously, everybody has their spells of spiritual dryness and I am no exception to that. But um, I have really found my faith to be such a huge uh, solace and comfort to me and such a source of um, inspiration spiritually and even academically throughout my adult life. 
and Lent has come to be very, very important to me as a time of a special set aside time where we we do certain things to try to better ourselves, to try to strengthen our faith and our relationship with God. It just around here where I live in Western New York, I'm looking outside right now. It is snowing. It's gray, you know. So it is a very dark uh, time in nature. This is the latter part of the winter. It's the least pleasant time of the winter because Christmas is already over, and so everybody is sort of done with being cold and gray and anxious for spring. And this is when Lent falls, but it, it kind of fits because, of course, we're journeying through Lent, making sacrifices, and it's good for our souls, <laughs> and it helps us to focus, I think. Um, and then when Easter comes, it's all the sweeter. So this particular Ash Wednesday, I, um, I went and received ashes at 4 p.m. That has been my custom now for a number of years. My kids go to Catholic school, and so they receive ashes during the day because they have a school mass. With my work schedule, I'm not able to make it to mass before work. And we no longer, I work on a, a college campus, uh, and we no longer have a Newman Center that's right centrally located. The Newman Center moved it's still on campus, but it's not accessible to walk to any longer. And where I work, parking is at a huge premium. And so to go out to my car and drive over to the Newman Center and then drive back, I would be putting myself in peril of not being able to park again and then being late for any afternoon commitments that I have. So lunchtime mass doesn't work for me anymore, unfortunately. And my parish has had a 4 p.m. scripture service with ashes for a number of years, and I've enjoyed going to that one. So I stopped on my way, I left work a little early so that I could stop on my way home. And against my will, I was a few minutes late. I should have left even earlier um, and I got caught up in traffic. It's my own fault. So I got there and it just felt like Lent. Um, everybody was very somber. The church um, what felt different. Uh, the statues are covered. The crucifix is covered with purple cloth. There's no holy water in the fonts for a couple of different reasons. <laughs> um, one is a decree from our bishop to try to aid uh, the spread of the flu, which has been quite bad this season. Um, and the other is during Lent, there often is no holy water in the fonts. It's just a way of reminding us that this is a penitential season, and so we're not enjoying these little sacramentals the way that we used to. And so just a lovely service, got the ashes, went home. The kids were out playing in the snow. Their ashes, of course, had already been wiped off by snow and hats and all of that. Um, and I just start, tried to, to get my Lent off to a strong start. I'm reading a couple devotionals, one with Henry and one by myself. I'll talk about that um, in another installment. And, um, and it's been lovely. It's only Friday after Ash Wednesday, so it's only been a couple of days. But, you know, at the start of Lent, our, our strength is at its peak. We really want to be successful. And so I'm off to a good start. I also gave a few things up for Lent. I'll talk about that. Um, in uh, yet another episode. Um, and so far, so good. <laughs> but again, it's only been a couple of days. But I'm looking forward to uh, strong Lent, um, getting a lot of spiritual fruits and fellowship with all of you throughout the season. Um, so yeah, it's all good. So how is your Lent starting out? How is your Ash Wednesday? I would love to hear about it. I am planning on talking to you again next week. I'm excited. I don't have tea this week. I have my mug of coffee that I bring in every morning. I tend to not sip from it while we have this podcast because then it's awkward for the audio. <laughs> but I always have a hot beverage with me, and especially now during Lent when I am sac sacrificing other beverages. Not that I would be drinking alcohol at work, obviously, um, but I've been having decaf coffee in the evenings and such and tea to sort of take the place of that. So I will, like I said, bring that up on another podcast. But I hope that you enjoyed our relaxation time this week, talking about Ash Wednesday and the start of Lent. And I will look forward to talking to you all again next Friday. See you soon. Bye.